Intraoperative gonioscopy is a rate-limiting step in performing any ab-internal angle surgery. In this instructional video, we will cover the essential perioperative steps to ensure a successful outcome. The need to learn this new skill set does not replace office-based gonioscopy necessary for pre-op planning. Familiarity of angle anatomy is essential in determining a patient's surgical candidacy. The scleral spur, a white band, serves as the surgical landmark separating the trabecular meshwork anteriorly for canal-based surgery from the ciliary body band posteriorly for supracoroid-based surgery. Although angle surgery can be performed with topical anesthesia, it is not unreasonable initially to administer a local block. To achieve akinesia in order to build surgical confidence and avoid intraocular complications. In preparation for surgical gonioscopy, several factors need to be taken into consideration. Note that the coaxial light is perpendicular to the surgical field, the patient's head and body is in a supine position, and the surgeon's elbows are straddling the flanks. In gaining proficiency with intraoperative gonioscopy, I recommend use of a fixation ring such as a Thornton ring. It provides familiarity in holding the handle of a surgical gonio lens with the non-dominant hand. It facilitates nasal globe rotation to access the peripheral cornea. Optimal wound construction requires two essential steps. The first is eccentricity. Initiate the corneal incision just inside the limbus. This will facilitate peripheral access of surgical instruments and prevent any interference with the gonio lens when placed externally. The second step is location of the corneal incision. Entry along the 3 to 9 o'clock plane will provide equidistant access to the nasal angle superiorly and inferiorly. I then employ Arsenoff's soft shell technique to protect the ocular structures. A layer of a viscodispersive OVD is initially injected to coat and protect the corneal endothelium. A second deeper layer of a cohesive OVD is then injected to achieve two objectives. It acts to tamponade the dispersive OVD against the cornea anteriorly. Second, it is advanced into the angle to create and maintain a safe workspace to facilitate safe entry and accommodation of instruments during surgical manipulation. To access the nasal angle, both the head and microscope are rotated in opposite directions about 30 to 40 degrees. Note that the coaxial light is no longer perpendicular to the corneal surface. The goal is to align the coaxial light along the axis of the iris plane. Note the increased working distance between the microscope oculars and the surgical field. As a result, the elbow of the non-dominant hand is extended from the flank anteriorly. This extension can be appreciated from the surgeon's viewpoint. Gonio lenses today represent a modification of the Swan Jacob lens, where the handle is contiguous with the lens, clutched by the non dominant hand with the side of the palm resting gently either on the patient's forehead or zygoma depending upon the laterality. The fingers are arched along the nasal bridge from both sides. Note the peripheral phalange at the base of this hill gonio lens to counter any involuntary eye movements. The Vold gonio lens is unique in several ways. The handle is continuous with the cleat ring to fixate the globe. The lens is suspended from a separate pendular handle. And both have multiple pivot points, allowing for surgical adaptability. Though topical anesthetic drops or viscoelastic can be used to dock the gonio lens, lidocaine gel provides patient comfort as a topical analgesic and as a coupling medium with the cornea. Adjust the magnification and brightness to view the angle structures. One can fine-tune angle viewing by having the patient look nasally. The corneal incision can act as a pivot point and anchor for instruments during surgical manipulation. If the wound is covered by the gonio lens, one can displace it with the Vold lens to access the anterior chamber. Post-op photography provides a means for strengthening the doctor-patient relationship by demonstrating surgical outcomes as well as counseling surgical candidates who are considering angle surgery. It is my hope that this skill set will enhance your angle surgery in providing the best care for your patients.